Hey guys, John here. Today I want to talk about three visual tools that are really going to help aid anything that we're doing in sound design. So the first one I want to bring your attention to is the Spectrum View, and I've used a lot of them, and I think the one in FL Studio, the Wave Candy version, is probably my favorite because it just shows so much information. So for example, if we go over here to a sine wave and we press a key here, we can see that this is just going to be one fundamental tone. Right. Or for example, if we go down to a saw wave and let's remove all of these harmonics here. So again, we're back at a sine wave and we have the same thing here. And then we can say, look, let's add this first one here. We can clearly see that this is adding this here and then we can start adding another one. So there's three now, which, which is basically these three bars and then another one here. And now we have four. So it's really helpful to see exactly what's going on. So for example, we want to do something like an organ. So here we can actually see what's going on. And then for example, we can even do something like adding a rotary sim on this guy. So we have a kind of a quick um, organ there in that sense. So if we go back to an initialized preset, this is one of the first ones here. So this spectrum view right here, which is very helpful. Another one I sometimes have, but in Avenger, I have an oscilloscope right over here, basically if I'm making changes, but you can have a live one here. And sometimes I'll turn this on like this. So I can kind of see what's going on with the waveform, which is kind of helpful. But again, I have this oscilloscope basically here in Avenger, so I don't really use this one as much if I'm using Avenger. So let's toggle this guy off. Another important one is the EQ down over here. So this one is kind of also a spectrum view, as we can see these vertical lines here, as opposed to horizontal. But also we see this kind of gray shadow here, and this is helpful if we're kind of doing filter modulation or something like that here. So for example, let's add some extra content here, some more unison, something like that. And as we do a filter sweep, not only do we see on the spectrum, but we also see how it moves down here on the graph. And it's very helpful to check resonance as well. So we see it all here as well. And then here on the spectrum view, it's a very obvious. So it's really helpful to actually watch things happen visually as well as listening to them because we have, you know, we listen to things obviously, right? But sometimes it really helps to visualize and kind of see what things are happening or see what's actually happening with that sound. And I say that because let's say there's songs out there or different patches that we want to make and we want to recreate the sound or maybe make it a little bit better or different or whatever it is. If you send that sound through the same visual tools, then you can kind of guess a little bit more what actually is happening. You can see, okay, maybe there's some really strong resonance on there. We can see maybe some motion in addition to hearing it. So it's only going to help you create the patches a little bit easier. Another one, which is really cool here. So especially in Avenger, this vintage, these two vintage ones here. So if we select this vintage right here, Let's give a lot of resonance to this guy. So we have something like that. And maybe let's get an LFO and kind of just move this guy kind of slowly. Maybe a little slower. So we have this predictable pattern. This really brightness right here is going to be our resonance. Now we can really see what this mod is doing. So that's at 100% here, and then we bring it back to zero. So not only can we hear a big difference, but we can also see that it is actually making a quite huge difference as well. And the cool part about the spectrum view is that we have a history here. So once we let go of a note here on our EQ, then it basically just goes away. But here we have the scrolling history right over here. So that's not so that not only is that cool, but check this out as well. If we go to menu initialize and let's say we go over again to maybe a uh, sine wave, something like that. And then we say, OK, let's add some vibrato. What does that look like? 
we can actually see what's happening here. And then down over here, we can see it moving as well. But here we can see how much of that pitch is moving. And not only that, but we can see that it is a triangle shape, which tells us this right here. Or for example, we can go to a sine wave. And let's slow this down a little bit as well. So there we can see it's clearly a sine wave. And then maybe let's go to the triangle wave again. And then maybe something random. So this is super helpful to actually see what's going on right there. Another use of this as well, for example, if we go back to a sine wave here, and then we can go to the pitch category, maybe do some portamento, something like that. So we see how these notes are connected, and then we can also add some curve here and see what that's actually doing. Maybe do it really long. So we see that this curve is actually adding a nice curve here and then another one here as well. So it's actually really helpful. And then we can see what's happening also on a delays, for example. So if we go to initialize, maybe for this guy, I guess we can maybe do a saw wave. It might be kind of interesting. So a saw wave, let's click here and then let's pick maybe one of our, I guess. Well, actually, you know what we can actually do? Let's do first do the delay and we'll actually go through a couple other ones as well. So these are clear indications of each one is a own its own basically delay. And what we can do is let's slow this down pretty slow. So maybe like one over two. And we can see them right over here, which is actually really cool. So it's super helpful. So again, let's go back to initialize preset. And then we might, we might wonder, okay, what does it look like if we send maybe a phase or send a signal through a phaser or something like that? So let's right click here again. And kind of just look here, kind of get used to this graph. Okay, makes sense so far. So now let's maybe go to a phaser. And let's turn it off. So we can clearly see what it's doing right over here. Okay, what happens if we increase the speed? Okay, definitely pretty cool. So let's also check out some different filters. Let's give ourselves some nice content here, maybe seven voices. And we obviously know what a low pass does, right? But well, for example, let's say we go to maybe a band or a band stop actually, maybe let's do the Nexus one. So here we're kind of just removing frequencies kind of going through the different spectrum there. And again, let's have this LFO going on here, give it some depth and then make this pretty slow. Maybe a little bit less depth, something like that here. And then now we can see, okay, what exactly is this resonance doing? So now we can see if this is all the way to the left, we have quite a huge gap here. As we increase the knob, we can barely see it and almost barely hear it as well. So not only is that cool, but then we can go to some of these special filters and kind of see what's happening here as well. See what the ring is. <laughs> so that's actually a really cool shape right there. So it's interesting to see what things sound like in addition to seeing what things actually look like. It's kind of a wild sound there. But yeah, that's something I wanted to kind of bring to your attention is whenever you're sound designing, maybe make some patches or practicing your instrument, 
definitely put some of these visual tools up because it's really going to help you in kind of seeing what's going on in addition to what it actually sounds like. So then if you hear something or find something out there, send it through this exact same thing that you practice with. And you might say, oh, okay, I recognize this pattern. I know what it's doing. So you know if there's a really bright resonance or there's something missing, you might think, okay, maybe that's a band stop. Maybe we really need to increase that uh, that resonance, things like that. So definitely use these tools. It's only going to help you. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it for today. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.